Welcome back everyone to Open Source Summit 2023 here in Vancouver. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE. We are here breaking down all the action. Rob Streche here, analyst on theCUBE, breaking down the analysis. Rob, this is a great segment on energy. Another one, Wamin Chen, who's the senior engineer at Red Hat, is here. Wamin, talk about what's going on at Red Hat. We've had multiple Red Hat folks on here. A lot of engineering going on in an open source company, Red Hat, we, we love doing some really cool sustainability things. What are you working on? So, uh, as a matter of fact, I'm uh, leading the sustainability development as an uh, office of CTO, the Emerging Technology Team. So this is a wonderful project that we have created in the last two years. And one of the first things we deliver is called Project Kepler. So Kepler is the one of the first projects that enables cloud native community to measure their workload energy consumption. Uh, this is a true fantastic news. We are seeing is believing, you know, a lot of times people are still talking about what my energy profile is, how much energy my workload consumes. If my run, I run my database application, what's my uh, carbon footprint, what's my energy consumption? So we are able to answer these questions by providing you this very simple tool, very intuitive AI UI. You can just see it and see how much energy you use and take actions from there. So I see on the notes here, IBM Research and Intel contributed mm -hmm. to this project. It's community driven, right. open source project that captures the power metrics across the platform. It sounds like a data acquisition opportunity. Data's in there. There we go. Let's get into the data. What's the, how do you look at that? What's the, what's the you vision? You are definitely right. So the first, number one task is to get the data. So what kind of data are related to energy, to the workload? That's the question number one. So to the background, we have a lot, we have seen a lot of research, academia research done in this area. You see people are research professors, research scientists, publish tons of publication, how to measure energy based on this data acquisition. But we are able to translate that research into practical software package and stacks. So from that point, you can use the scientific method to measure your energy consumption, uh, your solid foundation, with a transparent methodology and a, you know, open source manner. So that is something we are believe is able to help the community, help the end users, and help the industry to achieve that what goal. What kind of engineers are involved? Because what I love about the energy thing, I learned a lot, by the way, from the lfenergy.org, mm -hmm talk on theCUBE here. I've such opened up my eyes to so much nerdness that was cool. Um, what's the kind of engineering, software engineering is going on in the group? What's the makeup of the personnel? That's a very good question. So one of the things I'm proud of most about this project is uh, we as a community uh, consist of developer engineers like me, and science, uh, science, uh, research scientists like from people from IBM Research Labs. And people actually from the community working towards their advanced degrees, the master degrees, the PhD degrees. And these are the folks that stand up between behind the projects to make it happen. So we are kind of a very diverse community, diverse uh, backgrounds, and have really fresh minds. And some mind. big pedigree too on the, yes. on, on, on the degrees. Yes. Idea. We see that as a very uh, true testimony. People are very interested in this. Yeah, and, and, and that's where I wanted to, um, because I think, again, this goes to SDG 7, UN, and all of that, and you know, probably be talked about at COP 28. And, right. Uh, I think that's over in Dubai this year, or yes. coming up. And so, who are the consumers of this, of Kepler, right yeah. now? So, uh, we have a, a diverse, uh, Customer basis. Uh, we are not saying that as customer, as a paying customer, but uh, the interested customer, yeah. they are looking for solutions uh, to measure the workload energy in their data centers, in their clouds. So most of the folks are come from the financial and uh, financial service institutes, uh, the, like the banks, right. the insurance companies. These are the people that uh, have the first request, interest. And also we see manufacturing companies, the big, big name manufacturing companies also have the same interest from IT departments mostly. And uh, the, um, also there's a big chunk of um, the segments are also from the providers that's providing software services to the other customers. So these yeah. are the people who have the obligation to share the carbon footprint and energy consumption to their end user. Yeah, because I, I think that what was interesting is, uh, I, to me, I, to John's point, I think the LF Energy was really exciting. Uh, my, yes. my brother happens to work in sustainability for Mars, the candy right. company, and they do a lot with COP and GO and very dedicated private company, and uh -huh. they're looking at it from the sourcing, all the way from sourcing to manufacturing to you know, getting the candy to you kind of That's thing. That's right. And so it's 
what I'm what I think is really interesting about Kepler and that is that, and I think there was some talks uh, a couple weeks back at uh -huh. uh, KubeCon, yes. the Cloud Native Con, on using things like Kepler to then decide where you run your containers on exactly. what day, at, you know, what is the cheapest or most efficient right. power. Yeah, that's very. Uh, that's the point. That's uh, you know, LF Energy and Kepler can work side by side together. So Kepler is able to help you to identify the energy consumption, but where the energy is produced, that's LF Energy can help us. You do not just want to be for the sake of energy reduction. You want to save the carbon, right? That's your workload use. If you are able to identify the source of energy at a different time, different location. Right then you can have the best uh, carbon reduction happening. So we do believe there's a lot of collaboration opportunities between Kepler and the broader community. The, uh, well, I mean, companies. I want to ask you, as we have limited time left, I want to get into the auto scheduling. We had a description, hey, I want to run my washing machine at a certain time. We've heard you know, common use cases in the average home. Yes. But when you get into like the data center, uh -huh. you know, you got Kubernetes clusters, when you run workloads. Yes. Auto scheduling, workload scheduler, auto scaling are big parts. Right. What kind of innovation are you guys seeing with power aware? Can you share your yeah. vision on that? So when you see the metrics, you know how much energy used by your workloads, by your database, for example. If you are see at a time of the day, in the morning, the database using 10 watts, and at the busy times use 20 watts. You know pretty much how much resources, how much you should give to that database. So by scale the database up and down, based on the request, the number of you know, people using the database, and as the power cap, I give 10 watts, no matter how much you use. Then that is a combination that you can use to adjust your resource assignments, performance, as well as the energy consumption. The, uh, the Just watt. like rationing. Right. Here's your, here's your watts. That's rationing, that's right. <laughs> yeah, use it and savor it and marshal those resources. Yes. Okay, I got to ask you, since you brought it up, um, since I brought it up actually, maybe it was for a reason. I heard, we haven't verified this, but I heard that OpenAI uh -huh. is using a lot of carbon footprint to, to jam up there. What is your, what do you know about that? It's not my wheelhouse. <laughs> um, I imagine the large language models are, are, are compute intensive. Yes. I heard it's worse than crypto. <laughs> in terms of like, not crypto, but, but worse in terms uh, of uh, crypto uh, mining is a lot of GPU usage. Uh -huh. So I'm hearing, so what do you think about that? What's your expertise tell you? The good news is uh, OpenAI is providing the service as we like. The downside is that uh, within that service we like, we have to use a lot of energy, a lot of carbon. So good news is that uh, we have the solution. We have some mechanisms sitting behind. So the talk we just gave uh, 20 minutes ago, the cloud native, uh, cloud native sustainable AI is towards that direction. We can tune the GPU that the open AI are using to the service they are providing so that we can achieve the best performance per watt. Not just the best performance, performance per watt. So that we can achieve the performance, the usability goal, as well as reduce the energy consumption. We'll so that's, we the, that's the use case vector that will help open AI and the broader, with their energy carbon footprint problem that's yes. developing as a result of their success. Yes, we can make them successful without losing a lot of power. Well, they're successful now, but they're eating a lot of carbon. <laughs> <laughs> but they're not efficient, yes, to your are, point. We can make that happen. Yeah. Awesome. And I, I think, it, I think what is really exciting about it is there's for so many years been a lot of greenwashing, mm -hmm. people saying that they're green and car yes. and I think it comes back to how how is this helping you know determine carbon footprint? Yeah. So I think that's a very good point. A lot of claims are not backed by facts yeah. and are not backed by uh, you know solid data points. We are providing the data points. We can compile the data you are using right now versus what you're going to use in the future, you know, with all, all this optimization. So that is not so greenwashing, that is a wash you to the green world. So we hopefully can transform the people into the future by using that methodology. Well, I mean, the last minute we have left, take, take some time to talk to the audience, put a plug in for the project, what you guys are looking for, share some data, take a minute to, last minute to explain what you guys are doing, yes. what your needs are, what your goals are. Take a minute to put a, yeah. put, a, put a commercial out there. Okay, so thank you for watching this episode. So we believe that Kepler has a lot of potential. I think uh, the community in general needs to uh, look at how they're using the projects, how that project can be improved based on your own use case and the requirements. We'd love to see more contributors, uh, doctors, and evangelists to help us to grow bigger and better. Well, I mean, Chen here with Red Hat doing their job contributing, again, 
save the planet, make the world a better place, change the world, that's what we all want to do. It's very mission driven, but it's important. And open source is changing the game. And we heard the AI angle here. As you start getting into more power management, aware situations, auto scaling, all can be done responsibly. So thank you for watching. Thank you for taking the time. Thank well, you, all. Thanks, y'all. The Cube doing our part, sharing the data with you. We're here in Vancouver, in beautiful Vancouver. You can see how our, our office today is beautiful. We're sitting out there watching the boats go by, and you can see just a beautiful day in the mountains. Uh, this is our office. They're looking at that shot now. This is the Open Source Summit, the best minds gathering to create the future. The Cube is here. We'll be right back with more day two and we got day three tomorrow. Stay with us, we will be right back.